you know, horticulture is what we consider, you know, what the questions we ask, but there's so much that goes into growing plants, and then there's so much history that goes along with having plants here. So we like to have a little diversity in our panel, and I'm happy to say that we've got some of those people represented tonight, as we welcome Dr. John Nelson of the AC Moore Herbarium at the University of South Carolina, and our very own Vicki Burton-Nolly, who's our insect gal. Goodness gracious. Um, John, it looks like you've got something that you're going to um, quiz us about, so quiz away. <clears throat> well, Sean said we might have time for a uh, mystery plant, <clears throat> so I brought something from the backyard, and it's something that uh, Richard and I picked up in London, England, <gasps> Whoa. back in 1994. Goodness. And of course, it wasn't these leaves, but it was a seed that we were walking down the um, there's a big avenue at Windsor Castle, and it's lined with these big old trees, and the seed, the nuts were falling off of them all over the place, and I picked a couple up, and they were sprouting, actually. So Already sprouting. We weren't supposed to do this, but I brought one he back snitched home. A plant. Oh. He snitched a plant from the queen, is what it was. <laughs> I, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Got it past the uh, the beagle at the Atlanta airport, and now it's growing in our backyard. Well, this this is from the seed you when you put yeah. in. My yeah. word in heavens! And it looks a lot yeah. like our um, one of our uh, our you know the red buckeye that yeah, grows around yeah, here. Yeah, like yeah, But this yeah. is a great big tree potentially. I bet some of you all know it. Horse chestnut. Horse chestnut. I heard that exactly right. But would it be good for a? Would it be good for a horse, if a horse could, to eat a chestnut? Because our buckeyes, uh, is, this, is, is this related to the buckeye? Yes, it is the same genus. Mm -hmm. And but this is a European species. I wonder if it has any of those toxic compounds that our buckeyes have. I wouldn't be surprised. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, I have buckeyes in my backyard, and um, my friend Mary, Mary Reed Pittman um, told me that when her grandmother died, she had about 40 pocketbooks as ladies used to do, and in every single pocketbook was a buckeye because they are supposed to be good luck and mm -hmm. help you get rich. Um, I have two pocketbooks and buckeyes are in both of them, and I am waiting for the magic to happen. <laughs> <laughs> this is just beautiful, it's thank pretty. you so much, yeah. Um, a beautiful deciduous tree, and tell us why this is a compound leaf. Um, <clears throat> well, everybody, um, you know, a leaf uh, can be divided, such as this one is, or it can be, um, well, a, a simple leaf that isn't divided. And here's one right here. You see, this kind of thing. So it's real easy, except that um, you just got to know what's a leaf. This leaf has five leaflets. Well, why aren't these leaves, Dr. John? Well, the reason is every leaf will have, this is really interesting stuff. Every leaf <laughs> will have, at the bottom of its stalk, a bud every time. So there are no buds here. The bud is way the down here. The bud is way down okay. here, and there aren't any buds here. So, so that makes a compound makes versus a, comp a simple leaf. Compound okay. leaf. Okay, Vicki Bertinale um, is our insect guru, and she loves spiders, which aren't insects. They're um, arachnids, arachnids, but they're in that same big family. Yep. And, um, and she's also our fire ant expert. Mm -hmm. And um, Vicki gives the most exciting program on fire ants. You just can't imagine how <laughs> revved up you'll be. You'll be thrilled that we have fire ants to eradicate, and you'll feel very capable of doing it um, after they listen to you talk. It's one of the funnest things to talk about is fire ants. Fire it really ants are, is. It really they're is. exciting. Well, I think that there's a question down there, and if you will um, please speak loudly so that we can be sure everybody can hear you, we will thank you so much. This is Alberta from Blackville with a question about forsythia. Thank you. Well, I'm a transplant from New York, and thanks to your show, I have a beautiful garden, vegetable, and flower. And I seen Vicki at the State Fair, and she reminded me about tonight. I know you don't murder crepes, but what do you do with forsythias? Do you cut them back? Do you let them grow? Um, well, Vicki, do you want to... I let mine just kind of do its thing, is what I do. Because it's vase shaped. Yeah, it, 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 it's not really, it's not weeping, it's this big kind vase of a fountain shape. type. Mm -hmm. type uh, and Tony, um, 
and the only thing I ever do with mine is I go in and cut out some of the old canes yep. very close to the ground. Is that how you would recommend doing it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And especially in, in the spring after it's flowered, because you don't want to cut those beautiful flowers off, because that's really what makes Persithia. Persithia beautiful. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is a beautiful and, plant. And it, it also is a good signal for when you should put out those pre-emergence herbicides in your Oh, my goodness, because weeds are always popping their heads oh up. Oh, goodness. goodness gracious. Thank you for reminding us that. Well, I think we have another question. Vicki's going to be excited because Susan from Colleton has a question about fire ants. Yay. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Not only do I have fire ants, I have fire uncles in my yard. <laughs> And I really need your help. Do you have any suggestions on any type th th so we won't hurt, hurt the other little insects? You know, we're after the fire ants, but what we, can we do to get them away and yet keep the healthy, keep the balance going is what I'm trying to say. So the great thing about fire ants is that we've got pesticides that kind of target the fire ants. So um, you're not having off-target effects, you're not killing other stuff. Um, and the fire ant baits are really good about that. And whenever you put this stuff out, so um, there was a study done, Dr. Tim Davis did a survey of the ants of South Carolina. There's at least 121 different species of ants out there. Um, Dr. Eric Benson says it's gonna be, it's probably closer to over 200. And whenever you apply fire ant bait, um, fire ants are the number one predator in their ecosystem and they um, outcompete everybody else. So whenever you put fire ant bait out, they tend to beat everybody to the bait. So you're not going to harm any of the so other you're not, ants. You tend not to harm the other the Many other of species. which are just our native species. And yeah. what happens is, is the fire ant populations go down and then the other ant populations go up and so then their populations help control the fire ants too. Okay. So it's not just chemical control, there's also natural biological control going on too. Okay. We have a few, just a few minutes left, so we will quickly try to help you, sir. All right, Larry from Sumter, what's going on? You want a question about rye? No, I just wanted to know, is it too late to plant a winter garden? And if not, what would you plant? Aha, uh -huh. Tony, I'm gonna let you tell us this one, please. Okay, well, a seed on a lot of uh, different vegetables are really inexpensive. And if you do, and you might not wanna have a big plant, you can still have some small plants and you can still plant some things like turnips, mustard, kale. and kale, and all those things that grow fairly fast. If it's a good, warm, if you plant them during a warm time and the soil's warm, they'll come right up. Like right now, they'll probably come up pretty good. If you wait later, they won't come up as good. But yeah, get them short. And actually, uh, those mini greens, people are going crazy you over can those make money things. With those mini greens, That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Um, how about that row cover to, to cover them up? Yep, yeah, you can. Uh, row cover is wonderful. Inexpensive. Uh, inexpensive. Uh, it's just a spun bond type of material, and you just throw it over it when it's real cold, and then take it off and let the warm sunlight come in, and you can have them up to a long time and actually I have some strawberries back there in the back that I've been munching on and that's what they do with them. They cover them up with the road covers and they're already producing strawberries in South Carolina. And if you have not had one of the winter strawberries it is the most delicious thing you've ever had in your life. The top is a little bit white but don't let that scare you off. They are divine.